This is an account for odd gameplay I had during Sonic Adventure 2 for the Nintendo GameCube while playing on a modified build of the Dolphin emulator. A couple days after the events described below, I wrote this story based on my memories, footage I had recorded, and the notes I had jotted down. I have also put all my footage into one video and posted it on YouTube. The link is at the bottom of this page. Thank you for your time. I had recently gotten into Wii hacking when my internet friend suggested I rip my own games for emulators. He sent me a tutorial that allowed me to use my Wii to put GameCube games onto an SD card, which I could then put onto my computer and use Dolphin, a GameCube slash Wii emulator, to play. This was convenient because my Player One socket on my Wii was broken and it had been years since I could try to play any of those old games. Being the Sonic fan that I am, I immediately put Sonic Adventure 2 into my Wii, launched a program called Clean Rip, and about 20 minutes later, I was done. I hadn't used Dolphin before, but I eventually figured it out and launched Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I eagerly configured my controls and started with my hero storyline, thrusting myself into City Escape. I played for days straight, only stopping to eat, sleep, and go to my part-time job at the bakery. I was playing Chow Karate, my Chow, Tiny, delivered a spinning back kick to the opposer and won the match, granting me the final emblem in the game. I had all the emblems, all S rank, the secretary theme, all three Chow gardens, the alternate costumes, everything in the game. That's when it dawned on me this is the second time I've done this in my lifetime. And it's time to put the game to rest. I, I couldn't do it though, I was so addicted to the game, I had to keep playing. So I launched up the web browser and typed into a Google search, Unlockable Secrets in Sonic Adventure 2. I found some hidden artwork, apparently some Halloween costumes you can get back when the Dreamcast had DLC, but I'm on the GameCube version anyway. New items for the Chow Garden, but one thing really caught my attention, a Maria Robotnik menu theme. My reaction was that of a child. Oh my god, a Maria theme! I learned quickly that you had to have a Game Boy Advance to do it, and you need 30,000 rings. I had 50,000 or so rings, but I didn't have a Game Boy Advance. I searched for an emulator solution, and I found that someone had made a modified version of Dolphin that could connect with the Visual Boy Advanced M emulator, a Game Boy Advance emulator. I downloaded a Sonic Advance 2 ROM and launched it into the Visual Boy Advance M, then launched Sonic Adventure 2 in my modified version of Dolphin. I went to the Chow Garden in both games to make sure it was connected, then went to the Black Market in Sonic Adventure 2 and, lo and behold, the Maria theme was there. I bought it immediately and flew to the options screen to apply the Maria theme, but when I did, the game locked up and saw the Windows 7 message, Dolphin.exe has stopped working. Windows is checking for a solution to the problem, but it stayed for a few minutes until the close program button showed up. All I could do was hope I didn't lose my progress. I relaunched the game and saw Maria in the background holding the pose from the Shadows Past cutscene. Maria's image was frightening and tearing the graphics. The logos were very broken. At times, you could see through parts of them. It looked like MS Paint garbage. This was even so much more apparent when the opening movie started, showing the long bridge from Radical Highway with Maria still in the background. The graphics were still fighting each other as the backgrounds and buildings started seeming really broken. Even the sky was harsh and posturized by sharp blues and blacks. The special effects in the scene, like when it comes to Flash with lots of blue lights and says Sonic the Hedgehog, it just played all these animations at almost regular speed. They were all done before it even showed Sonic. It looked really horrible and the music didn't help. The game was lagging ridiculously. I mean, it was lagging so bad, I had to launch Camtasia and start recording this phenomenon. The music was choppy and pitched, but almost regular speed. Live and learn, as I heard the music fashion before the camera even zoomed in on Shadow's face. I assume since the game looked up, it somehow made Maria's theme beat everywhere all at the same time. But after I got past that horrible scene of Shadow opening his invisible eyelids and broken colors body with Maria's graphics fighting with him, Maria's theme wasn't even on the menu. It was Shadow the Hedgehog theme I had on before I did all of this. Naturally, I wanted to turn it on, but I found it didn't have the Maria theme. I was baffled. If it didn't have the Maria theme, then what was happening to the opening movie? 
This also means it didn't save, which means I had to do the whole thing again. I went to stage select, went to Chow Garden and it was Shadow, because I like him, ran into the normal Chow Garden, and was about to launch a VBM when I saw a new egg. I was frustrated, so I decided to throw the egg out and let some anger. When I picked up the egg, I decided to close Camtasia because the game was still lagging a bit. I threw it at the wall to the left of the Chow teleporter. The egg cracked and an odd Chow bounced back and behind me. I turned around to look at where the game froze. It looked like a Chow with Maria's hair staring at Shadow. Shadow was also looking at the Chow. I stared for a few seconds before I launched Task Manager to see if Dolphin was responding. Task Manager said it was running normally, so I messed with the controls a bit. It's not abnormal for Task Manager to say a frozen program is running, so I decided to close Dolphin from Task Manager's process. Before I closed Dolphin, I took a screen capture of what was happening. I opened Paint.net to save the screenshot. I cropped it while I was there because why not, and had a closer look at it. I thought I saw something really faint. I went ahead and saved the picture. Then I opened something called Curves, which is a color editor in Paint.net. Curves sometimes help me bring out details and pictures, so I decided to use it here. I played with it for a good 10 minutes. Then I saw her. Maria was staring down on Shadow. It was very faint, but she was there. On the right side of the screen, looking straight at Shadow, she was there. That was enough to make me breathe heavily. My mind was just blown. I didn't know what was happening. Should I continue my pursuit to unlock everything? Well, of course, today's my day off, and if I don't do this, what will I have to do? I launched the game, skipped that horrible opening movie, and decided to stop with the Maria theme. This time, I wanted to see if I could find anything else wrong with the game, so I went into story mode, dark story, and selected Shadows Past, the Radical Highway level. The cutscene with Eggman watching Shadow stand on the bridge played normally. I decided to launch Camtasia and record once Shadow's segment of the cutscene started. Hmm, how pathetic. Shadow said as there's a strange purple flash over the screen. Find them before they escape. The cutscene was playing normally until Maria's part showed up. The sound was messed up. The audio was saying, All the people do it, I beg. All the people do it, I beg. All the people do it, I beg. No. I beg. No. I beg. No. But the word no was in Shadow's voice. The cutscene played over itself for a moment, overlapping. Then the cutscene stopped short and went straight to the stage. Once I started playing the stage, I read, Break through the besieging military. But all the letters were grayed out except a couple. The letters that were not grayed out were the A in break, the R in through, the I in besieging, the M in military, and the A in military. In the background, I saw Maria's head and shoulders from an odd top-down angle. Her eyes were really dark, almost black, and she was sort of staring at Shadow from the left corner of her eye. I took a screenshot, but closed Camtasia because Dolphin was lagging a bit. As I first played through the stage, I had never lost sight of Maria. Even if it was her back, dress, feet, hair, one eye, or a finger, she was always there, fading in and out. I decided to pause the game and launch Camtasia again. At this point, I didn't care about the lag and wanted to capture this. A few seconds after unpausing, I beat one of the gun robots, and the Gerald in prison cutscene started playing over the game, but the text and special effects weren't on it. Just Gerald kind of sitting there, but it distorted the colors of the game. It was kind of like what happened with the intro, but Gerald was tearing the graphics instead of fighting them. The cutscene clearly had dominance over the other graphics. About halfway through the cutscene, Maria started fading in and out of the scene in different poses from different angles. Even with everything that was happening, the game was playing at perfect speed. One pose shocked me, however. Maria on her back with her legs spread awkwardly, allowing the camera to catch a full shot of her special parts. Maria was blocking her face with her hands. I decided to pause the game and stop recording there. I saved the video and severely blurred it out to that part you can't make it out. I didn't realize until I unpaused the game 
but I had been playing the entire time before I paused, and actually rather well. I was impressed with myself. There was another pose that caught my eye though. One of Maria completely naked, holding her pose during the Shadows Pass cutscene on the control panel. They started getting more disturbing, as another pose of Maria naked showed her legs were red, but it looked like her hair. Blood, I thought, but Sonic Adventure 2 doesn't have any blood graphics. Then again, this isn't a blood graphic. I screen capped it and cropped down only to her legs. Once I beat the stage, the game began to count my rings and score. Instead of getting rank S, which I totally deserved, a shot of Maria's face was shown and the stage faded out. Normally after Radical Highway, the cutscene with Shadow finding Sonic on top of the Bigfoot robot with a Chaos Emerald plays, but it was completely skipped. It also didn't put me into the Egg Quarters level. In fact, it skipped Egg Quarters, Lost Colony, Weapons Bed, Security Hall, and started the cutscene before White Jungle. Shadow was walking through the forest. The cutscene was normal. Shadow picked up his talkie and Rouge's voice was playing normally. This is Rouge, I've got a small problem. But the subtitles were incorrect. The subtitles read, Gerald, all the people do it. All the science. The audio continued normally, but the next set of subtitles didn't say. I can't believe that I'm trapped inside this locked safe with a... They said, St on the ark. When I wake, when I sleep, they look. They do thing. It continued, instead of chaos emerald. I guess I won't be able to call myself a... It read, S I do not know why it hurts. I cannot walk. I am... Instead of Treasure Hunter anymore, it read, Rug down by Gerald. No. The countdown of Eggman's bomb showed, then the screen flashed white, and Maria was shown leaning over a control panel. It does this in the cutscene normally, but the game froze there and the audio stopped. I thought Dolphin was lagging, so I opened up Microsoft Notepad and jotted down the subtitles, hoping to make some sense of them. I also decided to launch Camtasia. It took a minute to load up, but when it did, it didn't start recording because nothing was happening anymore. I loaded up Task Manager to see how much CPU the computer was using, so I decided to keep Camtasia open or close it. The whole computer was running, peaking at 50% and idling at 10%. That's excellent for the Dolphin emulator, especially when running Camtasia. Dolphin was still running according to Task Manager, so I decided to hit enter which I had pinned to the GameCube start button to skip the cutscene. Windows sent me a beep to say that Enter doesn't do anything. I minimized Camtasia and clicked on Dolphin so when I hit Enter, Dolphin would get it. But before I hit Enter, I noticed that the stars behind Maria's head were kind of off looking. I stared for a minute to see if Maria's face was back there, and I noticed a few odd patches where the stars were missing. I took a screenshot, closed Camtasia so I wouldn't kill my PC saving this. Then I opened up paint.net so I can save the screenshot. I stared at the Scott for a couple minutes. I noticed that the patches of missing stars were letters that spelled kill. I saved the file, then outlined the missing stars and saved another picture. I clicked on Dolphin and once again pressed enter. The sound effect played as the screen read, Stage 09, White Jungle, First Mission cut through the jungle in 10 minutes. Like in Radical Highway, all the letters in the text box were grayed out except a couple. The word cut, the T in through, the R in through, the E in the, the J in jungle, the U in jungle, the L in jungle, and the exclamation point. I never made any sense of these letters. I waited for the level to load and when it started, I saw Maria on the sky with the blank expression looking down on Shadow, but sort of toward the screen at the same time. I stared, observing every detail of her indescribable face. An ounce of logic must be left in my mind, because I told myself not to play anymore. I came up with a great excuse to take a break, figuring out these strange messages. I started with the screenshot I took of Radical Highway. I only had to look for a second before I figured out the letters spelled Maria. Feeling pretty confident, I wanted to take a shot at the subtitles I jotted down a moment ago. I first strung them all together in Windows Notepad. Gerald, all the people do it. 
all the scientists on the Ark. When I wake, when I sleep, they look, they do things. I do not know why it hurts. I, I cannot walk. I'm drugged down by Gerald. No. They look. They do things? When I sleep, when I wake. All the scientists do these things. All of the scientists were doing something to her when she was sleeping. Something that hurt. Did they perform experiments on her? I know Gerald was trying to cure Maria's neuroimmunity deficiency syndrome. Maybe he was trying to cure Maria during her sleep. Then I remember the pictures of Maria naked and the ones to where her legs were red. Oh my god, I said aloud. Did Gerald and these other men commit acts of... to Maria? I stood up and paced around the room for a while, occasionally glancing at the computer screen, refreshing my memory of the details of Maria's face. The experience was starting to make sense though. Gerald drugged Maria down and the scientist jumped her. It's probably why she loved Shadow so much. He never touched her. This is starting to fill out some of the plot holes in Sonic Adventure 2. Though, Shadow does mention Gerald building the Eclipse Cannon, and the Project Shadow is indeed an experiment to make weapons of mass destruction, not to cure neuroimmunity deficiency syndrome. In the Japanese version of Sonic X, I remember that Maria was put onto the Ark because her disease is contagious and deadly. If neuroimmunity deficiency syndrome is contagious, that means that all the scientists on the Ark got it and thus couldn't leave. This also gives a reason for the gun raid. Gerald gave them their weapons of mass destruction, Eclipse Cannon and Shadow, so Gun killed everyone on board to not spread the disease or use any of these weapons. Gerald was arrested. However, it was probably so Gun could ask him how to use Shadow and the Eclipse Cannon, two pieces of information Gun never got. If the scientists had the disease that made them had nothing to live for, which would explain their actions. Still, I find this hard to take in all at once. I, I mean, seriously? How old is Maria anyway? What could Sega be thinking? Would Sega put in such a twisted plot element in a children's game? I don't think so. But now that I think about it, there were a lot of holes in Sonic Adventure 2 that just got filled. And a whole lot of garbage in Shadow the Hedgehog 2005 that never happened. For example, Shadow didn't lead Maria to a dead end where she was shot like the Shadow the Hedgehog opening suggests. Maria in fact led Shadow to the cryogenic tube while already wounded, and then she launched Shadow out of the arc and died as she pulled the lever. It's obvious in Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic X, while Shadow the Hedgehog rewrites Shadow's entire life and honestly isn't very dark plot-wise. I'm starting to believe Sonic Adventure 2 plot was so sketchy because Sonic Team had to remove all of these gruesome plot elements last minute. Just like Genocide City from Sonic 2. It's still in the game, you just have to hack it to get there. And once you get there, all the level's graphics are gone. Linking both emulators together, like that must have caused the game to load up like it was originally supposed to. I think Shadow the Hedgehog solely exists to help cover up some of the nonsense in Sonic Adventure 2. After my logic session, I found myself seated, staring at the details of Maria's face once again. I couldn't stop feeling sorry for her. She's such an innocent girl, always valuing her experiences and providing light to any unsettling situation. For these men, no. These monsters, to crush her spirit, it's inhumane. Through some of my deep breathing, I found myself calmed and began playing the level. As I played, I couldn't keep my mind off Maria. The image of her in sexual positions fading in and out of the background made matter hard to ignore. The stars that say kill faded gradually into memory and pieced themselves together with these sexual positions of Maria. My logic was functioning in a mind-numbing way, but it eventually came to two possible conclusions. That Maria was killed during one of these acts, thus the stars that say kill, or Maria possibly wanted somebody killed. This isn't making any sense, I thought to myself, but I remembered something I had sealed away in my memory. When I was a child, I had a series of similar experiences with a neighbor. The game was Doctor. I still remember the words, let's play Doctor in the storage building. 
Her obsession with pine needles and blackberries, it's a painful subject. It went on for a couple days before the parents of us both captured the act. I never saw her again, but I came to a decision to forgive her. I was damaged though, those experiences once I had realized what had actually happened severely affected some of my major decisions of my life. When I think real hard about what happened, it honestly wasn't a terrifying experience. Demented, weird, and somewhat scarring, yes, but I had so much help and counseling from that point on it is no longer a problem. That girl, Maria though, she was on a space station full of men. Her experience was really horrible, and she didn't have any counseling or escape I had. She died on that ark, used as a rag doll and thrown into the garbage. I wish I could help her. I couldn't bring her into the same realizations I've come to if we only could met. Alas, this is only a video game, but I couldn't shake the feeling of connection I had with Maria. I decided to do whatever Maria would have me do, anything to clean her face of its paleness. Once I beat White Jungle, I got rank Maria's face and the game instantly flashed the cutscene of Sonic and Shadow going super, but Maria was fading in and out of the scene. I decided to bring up Camtasia but couldn't start recording until halfway through the scene. At some point the camera had already zoomed in on Shadow, cutting Sonic out. When the cutscene ended the game took me to a completely black screen. Shadow's animation was frozen, his shading was bland and his power aura missing. Live and Learn was playing, but severely slowed down and choppy. The background was fading in and out of many different harsh, burning colors. I saw Maria in the background, always on top of the colors. It looked like she was falling while holding her chest, and the shading was very darkly colored. I pressed the up arrow on my keyboard and started moving forward. The controls were very stiff and didn't feel like Sonic Adventure 2 at all. The camera was stiff too. I saw a wooden chair with Gerald sitting on it. Some white text appeared at the top of the screen. It said, For all the people on that planet, kill him. Right then, I knew murdering Gerald was the best thing I could do for Maria. I floated around him for a second, looking at his angles. He didn't look exactly like the Gerald from the cutscene. Maybe this is a beta model or something, I thought. After a second, some text appeared as to where the original text disappeared. Shadow. Do it for me, so we can be happy. I pressed X on my keyboard, which I had pinned to the GameCube's A button. Shadow's pose changed to the pose he holds when he attacks on the final hazard, and the game froze. Thank you. It was shown in white text on a black background. The font was on the bottom right corner of the screen. After a minute, I started pressing buttons. I pressed every control for the game, and then every button on my keyboard. Nothing happened. I decided to save this recording so I wouldn't lose it. I closed Dolphin and then started recording again. When I opened up Dolphin and loaded Sonic Adventure 2, the thank you screen was immediately there. No Sega logo, no license by Nintendo, just thank you. Maria wanted to kill Gerald for doing all of those things to her with the other scientists on the Ark. Revenge for dragging her down, holding her, doing her, it's disgusting. But helping Maria to carry out her revenge on Gerald made me happy. Now Maria can rest in peace. Maybe that's why Sonic Adventure 2 says, rest easy heroes. But instead of saying that, it says, thank you. You're welcome, Maria. So that was Maria's Revenge, written by Fictitious Animation. This is something that a lot of people have really wanted me to cover for some time now. And I can definitely see why. It has been a while since I've read it. And I, I sort of forgot as I was going on, but the kind of twist the story takes you on really just comes out of nowhere like a strong gut punch. And it really, it really helps you relate with the character that the narrator had similar awful experiences that would help him kind of fall under Maria's spell for the revenge she wanted. That was the original story that Sega was planning, much something much, much darker that they just switched on a dime, said nope that can't be in the game, and they closed it. It's, it was done, so they had to change it immediately, which in the story is used to explain why Sonic Adventure 2 story kind of has weird holes in it, and things don't really work out, and that Shadow had to kind of, like the Shadow the Hedgehog game, kind of had to retcon a lot of it. I mean, in reality, we know it's just that Sega doesn't know how to make video games, but I think it isn't absurd 
to imagine that Sega wanted something really dark and shocking in their game because, well, think about it. Sonic Adventure 1 came in 2001, which it came out after Sega was saying like they were finishing the Dreamcast. So it kind of reminds me a lot of a Majora's Mask situation where a console is sort of at the end of its life. You know, it's done, but the team has a bunch of assets. They want a game to come out and they have a lot of free reign. So they choose to make something much, much darker until someone, I want a headcanon, it was hopefully Yuji Naka would go, wait, no, we can't do this to a child. We are going to get in so much trouble so they change everything really quickly. Though, I will say that one thing I both admired and disliked, there was a lot of detail written in the story of like what software the narrator was using, how he recorded it, how he got the screenshots. But after they're introduced once, it's very unnecessary. Like there's 10 times in the story he's talking about Camtasia or screenshots or having to explain how emulators work. It's really not necessary. It's kind of wordy. People usually get it, especially if it's Sonic Community, they're gonna get it like that. I don't think it's necessary. I do think some of the detail helps like a realistic uh, telling of the story. Like someone, like this makes sense. This sounds like someone who knows what they're doing, but the repetition of it all is a little much. And I will say that something I didn't intentionally didn't narrate was it uses like sound effects to describe the menus changing, which is just kind of goofy when you're like reading such a dark story and just see the word shion typed out. It's very funny. I've also chosen not to narrate the last like chapter division, the closing word, which I don't like creepypastas that are just, just outright confirmed. This isn't real, guys. Don't worry about it because that's what this story does. And like the last paragraph is just the guy talking about using like his models and how he did it which is neat because the story does come with like original screenshots and some video footage that i'm i have to archive because it's probably going to get like taken down at some point because this story is 10 years old oh i i remember this story when it was new on mudahar's channel that oh that that makes me feel old but i will say even for its flaws, like even if you don't want to believe Sega would simply make something that dark, I would still, I still consider this one of the best Sonic creepypastas, which probably isn't saying a lot because the most famous Sonic creepypasta, you know the one, is a giant piece of ass written by a giant piece of ass. But this one really helps redeem the like the the subcategory. There's an enormous amount of specifically Sonic creepy pastas, along with ones like Sonic 3 hacked cartridge. There's another one or two I'm forgetting. There really is a division that either Sonic creepy pastas are total garbage or great, and this one is pretty great. So hats off to you, fictitious animation. You made a story that especially related to me, but with the guy working part time at a a bakery which I did and it was not fun <laughs> but I'm curious what did you guys think do you guys like longer stories because I can do them I don't know if I can update it every week because I also have to fit it into like a busier schedule I have but if you guys like it enough I certainly wouldn't mind reading more but as always, I hope you enjoyed this story, and until I see you next, and until then, have a lovely rest of your day.